This is the Rebel Call Channel. Welcome to today's show. A subscriber over on the website by the name of ADR, who is another one of the great subscribers over on the website who share a lot of information that I wouldn't see unless they shared it with me, shared this article with me. And we're going to go into detail about it because this is what I've been warning about for years and years and years. And everybody who doesn't understand how the climate agenda works should just look no further than what just happened a couple years ago because they literally go hand in hand. It was literally a test run for what's coming with the carbon footprint. And this was shared with me about what's going on in Germany. And Germany, they're starting to threaten that there's going to be weekend driving bans. That's right. German transport minister warns of weekend driving bans and actually has the authority, as I'll show you in this video clip, to potentially do this. If, of course, the district is underperforming and they're not living up to what they're supposed to be doing, they apparently have the authority to ban human beings from getting in their cars and leaving their home. Sounds a lot like being a prisoner, right? Well, this is what's coming to every country. This is what's coming from the carbon footprint that they keep telling you about. Tracking emissions, which keeps going in one ear, out the other ear for most of these people out there. They don't get it, right? And I tell people to take a step back and just think about the stuff that they did to you a couple years ago. Because it's going to be the same thing, just worse, right? They were seeing how many people were compliant in a lot of different ways. But one of the things was how many people actually stayed locked down? How many people obeyed a curfew? How many people stayed indoors during certain windows where they told you everything was shut down? Right? Because ultimately, it was preparing you for this. This is what they have in mind, making you a prisoner. And again, while you look at it, look at the flip side. You look at this whole driving ban, what they're talking about, the threat of you. If you don't change your behavior, we'll force you to change your behavior. And of course, the behavior is, look, we want you to get used to living as a prisoner in your home. And people out there go, oh, I don't know. It's not really the worst thing in the world. I don't like people anymore because of their politics done by design. I don't want to go outside anymore. I'm afraid to get sick done by design. And of course, I'll be helping people out if I don't leave the house because of my carbon footprint done by design. You know what else was done by design? Putting all these smart devices in your home so that they can monitor and track you 24-7 because that's what the NSA does. For anyone out there that's wondering what the NSA does in America, okay, please let me know what you think they do if, you, if you're a zombie. Yeah, please let me know. What do you think they're doing? You think they're listening to phone calls going on over in Afghanistan? Is that what they're doing, right? Oh, no, no, no. They're listening to us, right? And they want to see and make sure that nothing's forming that could be a threat to them, like a bunch of civilians getting together and stopping this from happening, right? That's pretty much what they're listening for. Now, most people go, well, that doesn't, that's not me. I'm not going to do anything like that. Yeah. But as more rules come into play, and this starts turning more into China, if you're even talking at the kitchen table to your wife, or your girlfriend, or whoever, and you're sitting there and you say, you know, I don't like what the government's doing. Well, guess what? Your power is going to go off because who controls your power? Who's controlling that smart meter? Uh, who's controlling that smart meter on your house or that smart thermostat, okay? And people go, that's never going to happen. Oh, it is going to happen. It is because the more we give them control, the more control they're going to take. And then, of course, the more authority they're going to rein in over us, especially if we have, actually have the audacity to speak freely and question a bunch of psychopathic tyrants. Let me show you a clip from Germany, okay? They're talking about this transport minister warning of weekend driving bans for citizens. Germany's transport minister is receiving backlash after threatening to impose a weekend driving ban this summer. Volker Wissing said such a ban could help Germany meet its proposed emission quotas under the Climate Protection Act as the country seeks to cut its emissions to net zero by 2045. Since September 2023, the country's coalition of the Social Democrats, Greens and Free Democratic Parties have been in talks to reach an agreement on passing climate reforms and adding an amendment to the emissions reduction law by mid-July. However, they haven't struck a deal yet. Germany's Environmental Protection Agency reported the country lowered its greenhouse gases by more than 10 percent in 2023, to the lowest in 70 years. However, Wissing said it's not enough to meet the nation's targets. And according to the climate protection law, any ministry overseeing a sector that is underperforming, such as transportation, must initiate a program to get the sector back on track. So far, Wissing has not implemented any kind of program since making changes to transportation 
it impacts people's everyday lives, and he says it cannot be rushed into. Wissian said if the coalition can't compromise on an amendment by mid-July, he would have to impose a two-day-a-week personal driving ban. Some lawmakers and politicians accuse Wissian of scaremongering. Germany's Greens party said Wissian was guilty of stirring up fears, writing a letter to the minister suggesting he make more sensible climate suggestions. However, Wissing defended his stance on public radio, saying, I told the citizens the truth. You can only save large amounts of pollution by giving up cars and trucks. Those like Greenpeace and the Greens, who always say that the climate protection law must remain as it is, may now be frightened by the consequences of their policies. Okay, and that's just the beginning. A weekend driving ban is just the beginning. Okay, we've seen stories, and I'll show you some more stuff on the carbon footprint here, but we've seen stories of what? Well, we've seen stories in China of people who weren't allowed to travel, had travel plans with their families, and they went to the airport, and of course everything's digital, so when they went to have their passport scanned and their ticket scanned, it was rejected. Why was it rejected? Well, because that person was not behaving the way the government liked. They actually started seeing some signs and patterns that he was reading things that might have been anti-government propaganda on the internet. And they said, hey, you know, or had a magazine maybe that he found. So they were just, you know, didn't like how he was behaving, so they didn't allow him to travel, right? Now, this all starts this way, where they tell you that, well, you know, first it'll be, do, you, do what you can, right? This is what we've seen going on. Well, the government wants you to turn your power off on Fridays. So never, we'll see who, will, who, pay, who does it and who doesn't, right? And only the suckers obviously do it. Because these suckers don't have a clue about anything and they just trust the television and the government, even though they've done nothing but prove to us that they can't be trusted. So they'll shut it off when they're told to shut it off. And then they'll obviously, just like 1984, right, right for the government, right out of their playbook, will rat you in. They'll say, my neighbor didn't turn their electricity off. But eventually, there's not going to be able to, a system of ratting anyone out because if everything is going through technology and Amazon and the corporations, et cetera, all these devices, well, they don't need you to rat them out because they're just going to do it themselves. Every Friday at 7 till 7 a.m., 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., lights off, right? And they go, oh, okay, what's the big deal? 7 to 7, lights off, right? And then it goes from one day to three days. And then it goes from three days to five and five to seven. And then suddenly somebody goes, Hey, you know, I remember seeing in a movie like Shawshank Redemption or something like that. Didn't they, like, in a prison? I've never been to jail, but don't they, like, say lights out? They go, lights out! And they shut the lights off and everyone has to go to bed in prison? Yeah, the, yeah, that's exactly... We're kind of living like that now in our houses. Yeah, you think? You think? Oh, and it's all because uh, their carbon footprint, right? So for anybody out there that doesn't understand carbon footprint, carbon tracking, they've been conditioning you with a lot of these wearable devices like the Fitbit, etc., so that you're comfortable with your steps being tracked, which is insanity to me, that people out there just have given into this stuff. They're like, I've got a Fitbit on. I'm tracking my heart rate, right? Getting that technology closer and closer to being in you, right? So they've been doing that. But the carbon footprint is the reason for it, not because they care about how many calories you burn. They're conditioning you into getting this technology, which will be wear which is wearable now, into your body, of course. But this is to monitor and track your every movement because ultimately the tax and the burden on your life is going to be carbon. And you're the carbon that they're trying to stop, right? Not the tanks or the towers or the planes. What they want to stop is you. And the only way to do that, of course, is for you to lock yourself in your home with no electricity. Because, again, they want us all imprisoned. And the mindset people need to have is, well, there's not enough jails out there. Right. So we've turned our homes into prisons. But here's just a look at the carbon footprint for anybody out there that's trying to figure out what it is. We're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned. We don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. You know you should probably reduce it, but what exactly is your carbon footprint? The carbon footprint refers to the total amount of greenhouse gases released into the Earth's atmosphere as a result of the activities of an individual or an organization. Remember, greenhouse gases trap heat inside the atmosphere, and that's overheating the planet. So if you want to work out your own carbon footprint, you need to know the amount of greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide, you're responsible for creating. 
It's a difficult thing to measure precisely, and there are different definitions about how best to calculate it. But roughly speaking, there's the direct impact of using energy when we travel or to power our homes. And there's the indirect impact of the energy that's used to create all the things we use or consume. In the developed world in particular, transport is a big part of your carbon footprint. Cutting down on the use of petrol or diesel cars and taking fewer flights is one of the most effective ways of reducing it. The place you live also contributes to your personal footprint. It's important to make sure your home is heated or cooled efficiently and is well insulated. The more you can use sustainable energy like solar or wind power, the more you cut your emissions. The stuff you use at home also adds to the problem. All that plastic, metal and cardboard takes a lot of energy to produce and dispose of. So recycling can help reducing your carbon footprint, but not as much as how you travel or heat and cool your home. Then there's your diet. Above all, red meat makes your carbon footprint bigger because cows produce so much methane, another greenhouse gas. And huge numbers of trees are cut down to create pastures on which cattle can graze. In the developing world, polluting stoves are a real problem too, so it's important to try to replace them with more efficient methods of cooking. But overall, people in poorer countries produce far smaller amounts of greenhouse gases than people in richer countries do. So, if you look at just what a country produces, the average amount of carbon dioxide emissions per person in the United States is about 16.1%. tons per year. In China it's 7.1 tons and in the UK it's about 5.5 tons. But in the Democratic Republic of Congo it's only 0.03 tons. While in Qatar, which has a really small population but produces so much oil and gas, it's 38.6 tons. Now that's just production. It doesn't take account of all the other things we've talked about, how much you consume. But obviously, the more money you have, the more you tend to consume. So if people in richer countries really want to reduce their carbon footprint, they need to make huge changes in their lifestyles. It can be done, and new technologies to make things greener are coming on stream all the time. But it is a reminder that the declared aim in many countries of going carbon neutral by the middle of this century means a revolution in the way we live. And ultimately, that's the plan, right? So let's take a look again at Germany. Germany's transport minister has warned that driving will have to be banned on the weekends unless the country's net zero laws are changed, right? And we're supposed to take these people at their word because, again, remember, when they put the word science in there, right, there's no denying science and there's no denying the people that you don't know who are telling you it's science, right? Scientists, you don't know, but they're telling us this. You might as well just call them warlocks. Right? They're the ones telling us this. It's like, you know, during the outbreak, you weren't allowed to question anything. You don't know what you're talking about. You're reading ingredient lists? How dare you? You don't know what you're talking about, right? And, of course, we were all right, but still, because of narcissism, a lot of people out there refuse to believe that and are so stubborn that they'll still go and poison themselves. But anyway, uh, so the party wants the law amended so the polluting transport sector can miss carbon emissions reduction targets as long as Germany – uh, as a whole reaches them. But the change is opposed by the Greens, who are part of a three-way coalition with the pro-business FTP and the Social Democrats, again, who are, you know, I feel like these people are like gimps. You know the gimp in uh, Pulp Fiction? I mentioned recently with the Satanic Temple, the gimp in Pulp Fiction, the thing with the mask, right? Is this what th th these like, Democrats are, right? They're just submissive. Like, they like this stuff. Like, they like being locked up, you know? They like taking orders. I mean, it's pretty embarrassing, it really is. I mean, it's just, it's a political party that's convinced their communist party, who won't question their party at all because they've been trained not to, that the best thing for them to do is to live in fear of every single thing, every single cough, every single person who disagrees with them, right? Because, of course, we can't have disagreements. You have to just silence the opposing party. And these people just love it. And they continue to go along, and none of them just go, hey, you know, I don't know what's going on anymore with my political party. I like the party because, you know, they were talking nice about uh, LGBT. I liked them because they were talking about Myra. But I don't know. It's getting a little weird, you know. It's getting a little much. They're telling me not to leave the house. They're telling me not to talk to people. They're telling me to cancel out other people's speech. Yeah, it's called communism, right? So in Germany, they're 
they're going back and forth about doing this. Okay, and according to the current climate protection law, the ministry responsible for underperforming sectors must launch an immediate program to put them back on track. So problem, reaction, solution, right? They just make up a problem, right? People react, they go, I don't know what's going on, right? And they go, well, the solution is we're going to keep you indoors on your weekend. So you're going to go to work Monday to Friday, then on the weekend, you're going to stay locked up in your house. But don't worry, we'll have an Uber delivery driver deliver you something for $50 a delivery, or we'll have an Amazon drone delivered to your home. But you stay inside, you got your TV. Okay, make sure you turn on, tune in to our propaganda. Okay, make sure you turn that on and then, you know, play some video games and dumb yourself down more and uh, go back to work on Monday. Okay, and be happy, right? Smile while we murder you. (laughs) Smile while we taser your nuts. Okay, just keep smiling and pretending that this is a Stepford wife dystopia because that's what it's turning into, right? That's what it's turning into. It's government overreach on steroids. And of course, so how convenient it all is that the government's the one who's creating the problem which doesn't really exist in the first place, right? They tell you about all this stuff about the climate. These guys fly all over the place. They don't expect you to say, oh, Bill Gates is a private place. They didn't expect anyone out there to actually say some of this stuff. So now they come out and they go, yeah, but, you know, I have to fly here. John Kerry has to fly here and do this stuff. Oh, okay, but this is the most important issue in the world, right? But you have to fly. They can't do it on Zoom. No, we have to go. Okay, but in return, we're going to donate millions of dollars to charities about climate change. And we're going to put vacuums in the air to suck the carbon out. We're going to put it underground so we can plant farm under there when we destroy the Earth's surface. That makes sense? Yeah, sure. Thanks. (laughs) They didn't expect you to ask questions about their carbon footprint. So, of course, they already have an answer built in, like I covered in that Bill Gates video. Oh, they're, they're just telling you how charitable they are which again is part of all the teachings of uh, freemasonry and secret societies is to be a philanthropist out in the open because when you're a philanthropist they just look at you and they go well what have you done this is what i do with my money what do you do well we struggle to buy eggs in our home what do you do oh well i give millions of dollars of your tax money that goes into my pocket uh into suffocating you with a carbon vacuum oh sounds great (laughs) thanks bill thanks john Kerry. Uh, right so this is what's going on Okay, more of these things are going to start passing. More of government overreach is going to start occurring because they're pretending like the youth out there. The youth are under full mind control. They don't have a clue. Okay, and it's not necessarily their fault. They build these kids up. These kids are on social media, eight years old, 10 years old, 12 years old. Right. That automatically starts turning people into narcissists. It's the truth. Whether you want to believe it or not, it's the truth. Those are all narcissistic tendencies. If you just look at basic social media. Posting your dinner, posting your nails getting done, posting your thoughts, it creates a narcissist, okay? You might not realize it. You will, most narcissists don't think they're narcissists, okay? So they're building that up. And then these kids are getting fed nothing but propaganda. And they don't want to believe that they're being lied to because they're getting built up by the same government. And they're being trained to think that we're all nuts. So these kids, these young people, and even the millennials out there, you know, we can look at people our, the age of the majority of us who are older, and we can say the same thing. We know people our age who are just completely and they refuse to believe they were lied to through their schooling system, right? They're prideful about it. We, even though most of us were tricked and duped and we realize, okay, we wasted our time, we wasted our lives with this stuff going through the school system, but at least we're not going to go to our grave being completely stupid and submissive to a tyrannical government, right? These people just don't want to believe it. So back to the youth out there. You can see the movement going on where all these kids are becoming more and more climate activists, which is part of the Greta Thunberg psyop. They continue to go around protests. They don't know what they're talking about. They're just repeating stuff that they think is scientific facts, right? It's just make-believe data. They're just repeating it. And they've been trained to dismiss us as all tinfoil hat wearers because that's the biggest thing the government's been doing for the last five years is just making sure anybody who questions it's a tinfoil hat wearer, they're dangerous. That's why they create a queue, et cetera, et cetera. So these kids don't understand, right? Now they're looking at it and they're going, look – The kids out there want us to do something. We're just going to have to do it. And everyone else out there is going to have to deal with it. And that's what they're going to do. And the youth is going to cheer for it because they're the dumbest of them all. And it's not making fun of them. It's not a shot on them. It's not fair what's going on with the youth. That's why I continue to do this on YouTube because there's a lot of youth on here and they find my channel. It's not fair. No one's calling you dumb. Come out of, come out of her and realize it. No one's saying, okay, they're making you this way. Believe in lies. We've all been there. We all were completely asleep and now it's time to wake up. Okay, this is a tyrannical government, left and right, working together to destroy and ruin our lives. And that's why they have us divided. That's why they have us down each other's throats, because we're not looking at the true enemy here, which is both parties who are completely compromised members of the same secret societies. The climate agenda is global enslavement, and it's coming. It starts with little things like this. It starts with you just nicely shutting off your electricity on a Friday night. And eventually it turns into just what you saw roadblocks, 
signs up, stay inside, and it becomes a crime if you leave. And especially, you know, if you try to sneak out or you go you go out past curfew, if you don't obey, okay, you're going to serve hard times in an actual cell. And people go, well, I'd rather just be home in my house with my stuff than go to a jail cell. And that's what the government's ultimately going to do, all in the name of the boogeyman that they've created using weaponized weather. I thank you for being here. Hope you're all well. God bless you and your families, as always.